So this is my current robot and it's been my current robot for maybe over a year and this thing is my new robot. Basically right now it's just a prototype but as you can see there are some pretty big differences. And the first thing that you can probably notice is that the electronics inside are pretty similar. That's because they are. They use basically the same motor controllers where is it right there the same chips basically everything is even the same voltage regulator but right here on this robot it can be closed and it's ready to go whereas this is just a prototype so it's a bit harder to fit everything inside, especially with the bigger motors. But one thing that's not going to be inside is this battery. Actually, it's going to be placed right underneath the robot. The, here goes the first battery. And here from the other side goes the second battery. So it will have a double the cells, double the power of this robot and that's because I designed it so the two batteries can fit at one time so these powerful motors can get the power they require because in the previous robot I used just these small motors they are uh, a 120 watt motor each so 240 watts total whereas these are uh, a lot bigger one is probably somewhere around 2.5 kilowatts so together around 5000 watts and yeah it's just enormous amount of power and uh, even the batteries are going to have big problem with supplying that power so that's why there are two of them so that more power can be delivered to the motors and a huge benefit of having these motors is that they come with a hole sensor right here is the output for it so that i can get precise readings about the motor's velocity basically how fast is it turning whereas right here i needed to develop a custom system for controlling or for measuring the RPM. And there are also many things that these robots have in common. For example, these connectors are the same one. So we can just reuse all of our attachments and basically we don't and basic and basically because they are the same connectors, the same attachments will work for both robots and the same thing goes for these connectors right here at the top these connectors are going to be placed one two three here right now i just haven't installed them yet but again it's going to be compatible now let's have a look at the bodies as you can see they are approximately the same length but this robot is a lot wider because of the batteries that will be placed at the bottom and because of these motors so that there is enough space for them. But I wanted to increase the strength of the body even more and that's why I designed this aluminum skeleton. It also has some st uh, stainless steel parts but mostly aluminum so that it doesn't add any weight it's going to increase the strength and the rigidity of the body so much more than just having it from plastic and it's already cut the aluminum is already cut into several pieces and right now it, j it just needs to be assembled in and put basically screw it the, the aluminum body to the robot and the biggest difference which it, that is between these two robots is the way the wheels are connected to the rest of the body so right here this 
drive wheel is connected directly to the gearbox and the gearbox is directly connected to the body of the robot so it, it doesn't move it can just rotate and the same thing goes for this other supporting wheel on both sides it's the same but here comes the difference in this robot this is a pretty complex mechanism let me just show it to you we can easily remove the track it's just a bit hard to do with one hand okay so the track is removed right now you can see that this wheel can can basically move around this and this wheel can move around this so this adds flexibility to both wheels meaning that by creating this simple and yet complex mechanism i've added a suspension without any springs or any shock absorbers just plain basically uh, i'm utilizing the power of gravity and the power of tension so we are rotating the whole body and yet the wheels are still standing still and that's on the both sides that means that when the body stays still the wheels can rotate move pretty cool and the thing that makes it so easy well not so easy but it makes it from extremely hard to just very hard is that these two robots use the exactly same software so there is pretty much no difference right now if i just uh, switch uh, swap out this chip from here to there this robot will function like it's supposed to and if i keep it here the robot also works as it's supposed to and also a pretty important upgrade not so big as the suspension is that this robot doesn't have a gearbox right here the gearbox right is right here it looks like this and the point of a gearbox is so that it reduces the rpm the speed and increases the torque the point of this robot is that it just has this right in there the timing belt so it reduces the rpm from the robot oh, from the motor to the uh, wheel just by about three compared to this gearbox which re reduces the rpm and increases the torque by about 55 and that's because these huge motors already come with sufficient torque and the whole point behind this is so that i don't have to switch gearboxes i can use the exactly same drive wheel setup for slow and yet precise movements but also for fast movements and for this i needed the big motor so that it would both feature high rpm and high torque this small motor just features high rpms but doesn't have enough torque this robot has both that's great so let's try to put it into test and firstly let's go see how it performs with the slow movement and as you can see again the all of the components are just put there they aren't connected to the body at all they're just holding by their teeth and it's because so that i can easily remove it change it up or put it back inside so that i don't lose time with just assembling and disassembling it over and over again if i want to change something because it's still in the prototyping process
All right, let's now try to do something really fast so that we can even test out the fast motion. As we saw earlier, the robot had no problems with going fast, it just had problems with those slow and precise movements, but this slow and precise movement is exactly what we need for, for example, lawn mowing, where you want the robot not to move fast, but to move precise around some obstacle and you could also see the shivering or like starting of the track it, it, it was going like so yeah and that's because the motor is trying to move but just doesn't have enough torque to do so so naturally in when you're controlling you increase the power so that the motor can start moving once it starts moving the power is not needed for the torque so naturally where else can it go it goes into speed so the motor quite literally gains significant amount of speed in a little bit of time that's why it accelerates so fastly and it's not able to do those precise movements however I think that this could be solved in a software where once the motor, well, once the software picks up that the motor and the tracks started moving, it very fastly, basically within a couple of milliseconds, decreases the power for the motor so that it doesn't increase the speed but just keeps going slowly not sure if it's a good idea but i think that it's worth a try as you really can't move forward to mowing the grass if the robot won't be able to do these slow movements and if you have any idea on how to solve this problem because i can only think of two and that's increasing the gear of the timing belt but that would also decrease the maximum speed or doing something like a traction control or a launch control system in the software and if you thought of any other solution that could solve this problem please write it down in the comments as it would help a lot and thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and uh, in the future we're uh, Basically, in the next couple of videos, I want to assemble the aluminum body and just keep on testing, maybe bring the robot outside or doing something fun with the robot. So thanks for watching and bye bye.